Annie is the daughter of a superhero pair. And though they love her very much, the two are hardly there. But Annie has a special power and robots on the go to help her learn the things she needs to know. Yes, she has Arlo, Arlo, and a cheeky red robot pod. So here we are and on we go. Let me guess. A traditional drum from Zambia. Just what I've always wanted. Maple syrup from Canada? A golden nugget from Bolivia? No, a fridge magnet from Norway. Norway? A seal. This is perfect for my collection. I want to see. Look, Pod, another fridge magnet from my mum and dad. Hey, it's stuck to me. Yes, it's attracted to you. Really? But I'm not a fridge. No, but the elastium you're made of, although stretchy, is mostly metal. And magnets like sticking to metal. Not all metals, only certain metals like iron and steel. <laughs> Rewind. You're made of elastium too. Oh. I've always wanted to wear one of these. Now, as I was about to say, magnetism is just one example of the many forces of nature. There are more? Oh, nature is full of them. Some pull, like the magnet, some push. Without them, we couldn't do much. Pod, let's show Annie forces at work. Off on a mission! Look how many pushing forces are used in sports. The ball's going one way, and now it's forced to go another way. Yes, a force changes the direction of things. The balls are coming down, and the boys push them back up again. Here are pulling forces. Ooh, that looks like hard work. Rowing uses pushes and pulls. The springs are good examples of push and pull forces. The springs at the sides of the trampoline expand when the boy lands, and when they contract, they push him up in the air again. And, and this force is big enough to push the rocket into space. <laughs> hey, I'm going too. Uh, this is Mission Control. We have an alien presence. Pod, come back here at once. Rewind. Hello, Jack. Hello, Alex. Hello, Pod. Now you've got your cameras. This is what I want you to do. Go round the park and film as many examples of forces as possible. OK? Off you go! There's a pushing force. There's a pulling force. She's pulling the gate open. There's a springy force. That's right. You push down and the spring forces you back. That lady's pushing her on the swing. Jack's found another pushing force. And there's somebody pushing a buggy. You need a bigger force to push two babies. She's pushing around about. There's a pushing force. And look, now he's being pulled. Well done, you two. You've found a lot of forces. You promised us a treat, Pod. 
Here you are. Look, they're using a force to change the shape of the balloons. Whee! Pushing and pulling. So, when I use a push force, I move away. Very good. And when I apply a pull force, you move another way. Also, when I activate my up jet, the force pushes down so that I can rise up. Wow! And when I activate my down jet, they push up so you come down. Ugh, a little too hard, unfortunately. Can I see more about forces? But of course, Annie. Pod? Now where's he gone? Oh. Pod! Pod. Where, Where are, are you? you? Here I am, and here I go! Here, the force of the wind pushes the sails around and turns the millstone to grind the wheat into flour. These days, the wind pushes sails around to make electricity. And here, the wind is pushing the parafoil, which pulls the cart along really fast. Ouch! Hi, kids! Hello, Pod! Ready to have fun with forces? Yes! Then let's go! Oh, wow! A strength hammer! OK, Quincy, give it a go! Remember, hit it as hard as you can. Twenty-four! Wow! I want to see that again. Quincy uses a downward force to make the weight go upwards. Forces act in a particular direction. Your turn, Matthew. Twenty-three! Use twice as much force, Matthew. Good work! What's next? Ifunaya, what have you got to do here, then? You have to throw the ball so you can hit down the clown. Give it your best shot. You used enough force to knock it over, so why didn't that work? Because uh, I didn't aim it properly. Aiming's really important. You have to throw it in the right direction. Oh, almost. Well done. On to the splatter pole. Yeah! Three, two, one, go! Yeah! Here's another example of where you have to aim properly and use the correct amount of force. The harder you pull, the further it goes. Who are you aiming at now? Missed me! <laughs> this is the best example of forces yet, Annie. There's Quincy! Look! She's bouncing off other cars. And there's Matthew. Ooh! Let's see that again. Rewind! He's going one way, and when he gets hit, it changes his direction and his speed. Now Quince is chasing Matthew. Look out, Matthew. Out! Out! Ooh! Matthew's really feeling those forces. Well done, kids. Let me take a photo for a fridge magnet for Annie. Big smile. Are all magnets fridge magnets, Ollo? Are all magnets fridge magnets? Annie, there are magnets used for all kinds of things. Pod? Uh, oh, where does he disappear to? Hello? It's Pod. Pod? Wee! I'm a fridge magnet. Oh, very clever. Now, time for work. I'm right here, and off I go. Magnetism's a useful force. It's strong enough for this man to climb the chimney with magnetic grippers. And it can be used for picking up steel tacks. Look at this scrapyard! 
What do magnets do here, Pod? I'll find out. Hello, Tony. Hello, Pod. What's all this junk doing here? Uh, this is where all the cars and the fridges and the washing machines end up. Does that mean you repair them? No, no, we recycle them here. The cars, the fridges and any other scraps delivered to the yard, it's unloaded by a grab machine, large cranes. It's put onto a steel conveyor belt, which transports it into a big shredder where it's chopped into small pieces. It's then transported by a conveyor belt again to some drum magnets. You can actually see the metal being attracted up onto the magnet and the non-metallics dropping under the magnet. Then the metallic material can be melted down and reused. But remember, Annie, only some metals like iron and steel are magnetic. Other metals like aluminium aren't attracted to magnets at all. Magnets come in really useful here, don't they, Tony? Yeah, they're very important in this operation. You couldn't do the job without the magnets that we use. Wow! What does this magnet do? Uh, that's a plate magnet. That's for picking up smaller... Uh, metallic material, it, it attracts it up onto the magnet, allowing you to pick it up off the floor and then drop it using electricity. That huge magnet's attracting all the magnetic material. Yes, and magnets can attract other magnets too. And they can do the opposite. They can repel. Hi, kids. What have you discovered? If you put the same ends together, they repel. And if you put the different ends together, they attract. So what are you doing now, Tanith? We're seeing how strong the magnets are by seeing how many paper clips they can hold. Miles, what makes this a fair test? It's a fair test because we're all using um, the same ends, the blue ones, and because the paper clips are all the same size, which is pretty small. Would it be a fair test if you used this one? No, because this one's really ginormous and, well, they only have small ones and I'd have a big one. How many do you have, Monica? I have four paper clips on my magnet. Okay. And how many do you have, Miles? Five. And I have two. So out of the three, Miles has the strongest magnet. Even though my magnet was the smallest, it was still the strongest. Oh, oh sorry, Pod! Oh, got too close. Magnets just can't resist me. They're attracted to me, you see. See you! <laughs> Some forces are fun, aren't they, Ollo? Great fun. What's that, Ollo? Ollo made a springy game for me. In my calculations, you'll fly right through the window. Ready? Ready! Then off you go! Head for the window pod! Uh, not me! Uh, no! <laughs> Don't worry, Ollo. Pod won't get hurt. He's made of elastium. Yes, I know. And happily... So am I. Pod the Indestructible! Arlo, Arlo, and the cheeky red robot pod. Yes, she has Arlo, Arlo, and the cheeky red robot pod. So here we are, and off we go. Pod can't work out where his shadow comes from, so he heads out to investigate. That's the mission for next Thursday at 11.45 on BBC Two.